All right, everyone, it's CM Kozeman again, back with a long, long overdue Answers podcast mini episode to questions from a certain fr- online friend, Charlotte Tietze. She sent in these questions towards the end of last year, near 22nd, near the 22nd of December 2022. And because of all the intervening stuff, I was busy on personal projects, personal matters. We had the enormous eight episode giant frogs podcast all like edited out and released. So that was like a big interruption. So my uh, sincerest apologies for the late response. But here it is. Questions about paleo art. And what it means to be a paleo artist from my online fan and friend Charlotte Tietze. Thanks in advance. And before going ahead with these amazing questions, I'll always recommend you the usual rules of House Kozman. That is to say, number one, listen to me at two times or 1.75 times the speed for basically to make me sound like a cooler person. And number two, please consider donating to me on patreon.com or buy me a coffee. I really, really, really am thankful for all your donations and even a penny a day or a dollar a month or whatever really makes a huge difference and I can't thank you all enough. And I mean, I will soon have to launch this new program. Don't worry, nothing is going beneath a paywall. But I will launch a patreon questions only kind of activity in the near future so if you support me on patreon for even as little as a dollar a month you will be able to ask questions and i will respond to them all but the details about this activity i'll announce later on anyways let's go so this is about being a paleo artist and paleo art and paleo art is the depiction of extinct animals dinosaurs prehistoric mammals stuff like this And, you know, there are people whose talent makes me look like a squirmy bug to be squashed. But truth be told, I am very thankful to powers that be for having achieved a certain level of recognition in this scene. I have my own paleo art style. It is kind of abstract, but at the same time accurate and strange. So, you know, I've been lucky to be able to ply a trade. But before going ahead with this, let me warn all of you that even today I don't make my living from paleo art. I mean, I sometimes take commissions, but when they happen, it's like a windfall. And yes, I did author and partially illustrate one of the more famous books about paleo art in these decades. That is to say, this book, All Tomorrows, no, All Yesterdays. But even with that, you know, it's a different thing to make money from it and it's another thing to be popular and insightful about it. So let's go. Charlotte asks, how did you get into paleo art? How did you find yourself drawing extinct animals? Basically, this developed together with my interest in dinosaurs and it kind of got an enormous bump in 1993 when I saw Jurassic Park at the theater. And then there was a kind of dinomania even in the country where I'm living in. So there are all these like magazines and books about dinosaurs. But I quickly, and I think very smartly, only decided to pursue the best dinosaur books in the language they were written in. So I would like maybe save up for a year or like ask for a grandparent who was going on a holiday or a business trip overseas. And I would like collect English paleo art books. So all the classics like the Dinosaur Data Book, the famous um, Dougal Dixon Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Life, and many, many others I collected even when, like before I was elementary school age. So that kind of was my first interest. And soon, sooner enough, I think the like particular memory instance it happened was like my father, who works also as an architect, brought home a sheaf of tracing paper which is this really nice semi-transparent paper that holds pen and pencils really well and it's kind of like it was leftovers from his architectural practice so i started putting these on top of my favorite books and kind of drawing on them copying them 
Heck, in fact, I think the image of this video is going to be one of those early attempts to trace other paleo art. So I started with tracing, but soon enough I started putting my own iterations and then I just wanted to draw the things I was interested in. And I don't know, like some days you wake up, you want to draw some things, a certain thing, so you draw it and that's how it developed. So that's my origin story. Number two, what is the biggest flaw with modern paleo art? or the modern reconstruction of extinct life in general, in your opinion. Thank you. I think the biggest flaw is basically there are two biggest flaws. One of them is just these people copying other people's works. Like a lot of contemporary books about dinosaurs, they're drawn by commercial illustrators. So they're competent people, but they are not specialized in illustrating dinosaurs. They usually make silly mistakes and like all artists and all illustrators, they copy. And they copy other mistakes and so it becomes like a game of telephone. Or a game of Chinese whispers. So that's how that rolls. Another big mistake, I think, is the, dare I say, pusillanimous reluctance to divorce oneself from the extremely realistic interpretation. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, there are some geniuses in that field, and I can only look up to them. But, in this day and age, why does every paleo art of Velociraptor or Deinonychus have to be extremely realistic? And you can also have sort of impressionistic uh, paleo art. That is to say, you will still be kind of honest and uh, loyal to the fossils, but sometimes you don't need to draw every leaf or every stone or every wrinkle of the skin. Sometimes you can push up contrasts, isolate backgrounds and focus on the character. Sometimes you can just abstract a lot of things. And in fact, there's a recent book my, by my very good friend. And actually, we were best man at each other's weddings, John Conway. He just published this new book called A History of Art with Dinosaurs and... I think like it's this kind of diamond in the rough. I don't know why this thing isn't popping off everywhere. But it's an amazingly new and fresh stylized look at paleo art. Basically in this book, John Conway interprets dinosaurs and prehistoric animals in the styles of old art history masters like Renaissance artists or Impressionists or even Cubists. And it's an amazing, amazing gem of a little book. So I really recommend that. What advice would you give to someone who wishes to work as a paleo artist? I mean, I answered this question a lot of times before. <laughs> I think like the ultimate cheat code answer is actually own your own house or don't pay rent. And then you will have the time to focus on basically your paleo art. Because in this day and age, like almost nobody... And this even includes giant names like Wayne Barlow or Louis Ray. Like almost nobody I know makes their entire living from paleo art alone. Even if they're an artist, they take other gigs or they have other jobs. It's just a sad state of reality we're in. But I think with paleo art, it has always been kind of like this. But in the past, you had this thing called public funding in which museums would genuinely, it seems, fund paleo art. And I'm, I'm thinking about like these like giant names like uh, Jay Materns. He has these amazing murals. Oh, I'm, uh, those were something. But I think today the world has gotten more cruel. And there are more paleo artists on the block. So competition is intense. So I say my biggest advice is find yourself the financial security and stability in which to really nurture your own unique vision and also always draw 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 you must like even if it's a little sketch every day you must draw something you must create something or it just doesn't work so that's my advice for someone who wishes to work as a paleo artist what is the most important aspect when drawing extinct life for you okay that's also a great great question always look at fossils and not just trace images of fossils, but like look at multiple photographs of museum mounts. If you have a natural history museum in your part of the world, go visit it. I think like a lot of people, myself included, we just 
most of the time we draw skin around to the skeletal reconstructions and that's all right but you really lose something when like i'll give you an example my good friend tk sivgin i was talking about um, what were they called those little waddly maltings they're not rhinosaurs but oh they're these like mammal like reptiles my mind is blanking right now but i was talking about these like abundant mammal like reptiles and i think they were called listrosaurs or something i don't know it's kind of silly of me to forget but anyways and we all have like their weird skeletal drawings or other people's paleo arts but then my good friend tk sivgin sent me uh, photographs of a listrosaur skull taken from different angles and when you get that perspective you know not a side only perspective but you really see the animal's face and they have that really weird flattened faces and like eyes that flare sideways it's a really strange creature when you when i saw that uh, something clicked in my brain so i would really recommend you study actual fossils if you're studying in college or masters actually you can actually just write to a museum and apply to see their fossils and they would be very happy to help you at least in western countries this is a norm so go go try to do that it's a great recommendation look at fossils directly another question by charlotte Titze. how much speculation is too much speculation i don't know as long as you're conscious about it i guess not not at all like you could even make the silliest reconstruction but just you know be aware that it's a silly flight of fancy and that would get people's noggins jogging hmm i mean i always remember this one parable of this uh, recent contemporary great paleo artist hodari nandu and it's h o d a r i n a n d u he's a very very talented paleo artist and i remember like 10 years ago like around 2012 or 12 2013 he started out with these like amazingly fantastic speculations about paleontology he had like wild things like he had like allosaurus with flight feathers so it was like it had like giant wings it couldn't fly but it had like giant flapping wings and many many other fantasies like this besides now at this time many idiots mocked hodari nandu and his extreme extreme speculations but the guy was just obviously stretching the limits of his mind and his skills and if you could not see that you were just not cool and now if you look at that look at him today hodari's work is thriving extremely based extremely realistic almost photorealistic reconstructions so if you're listening to this my good friend hodari you were right all along how does speculation impact paleo art i think i answered this question kind of in between the lines in the previous answers i think even if it's like exaggerated it impacts paleo art in a good way because even when people are drawing the silliest things even when they're drawing aliens they're stretching the boundaries of their skills and their imagination which always contributes to good paleo art at the end how do you think final question the e popularization of the internet influence work such as yours well we are discussing this on the internet today so i mean it's an understatement to say it was a good influence it practically made my influence even as uh, even in as ancient times as the early 2000s i was able to collaborate with people like john conway or darren nash or exchange ideas with many people thanks to the internet if it wasn't like it would be very difficult to imagine like imagine an alternative world where for some reason the internet never develops and we are stuck in like some sort of 1980s 1990s technology forever so you still have lots of magazines books and stuff i wonder how that paleo art would develop then you would it would be completely different you would have completely different names maybe the work would be the work that would write to the surface would be of a higher quality comparatively but it's just an imponderable 
the internet made paleo art in its contemporary form you cannot understate its importance enough wow i'm just thinking about this like tangent universe without internet a lot of people would have better mental health but you know it would be a, a less colorful world for everyone concerned anyways that was that for charlotte Tietz's questions thank you for your patience charlotte and i hope you find these answers satisfactory please consider supporting me on patreon this has been cm Cosa man goodbye